Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to look at partial F test. And just briefly, a partial F test is testing a subset of the beta parameters. Are they equal to zero or not? And a subset means one or more. And here's the model for multiple linear regression. Y is equal to X beta plus epsilon, where epsilon is multivariate normal, mean vector zero, variance covariance matrix, sigma squared i. Now the generically the partial F test you know, is testing the subsets of beta parameters equal to zero. And so my notation is that I'm going to put in parentheses a number and that's how many beta parameters are here. Versus the alternative that at least one of them is not zero. And again the uh, notice the vector sign so uh, beta i you know contains i beta parameters <clears throat> now we're going to look at the partial f test for the for the type 1 sums of squares the type 2 sums of squares and in general um, we could technically just probably skip to, to the general but I think it's worth going over these so the type 1 sum of squares we represented like this so r of beta i so that's 1 beta and then all the previous betas, you know, before that. And I'd recommend that you go see the previous video, number 28 in the playlist, for more details on the type 1 sum of squares. But we write the beta parameter as this, where this is the ith beta parameter. So let's say the fourth in the list. Then beta 3, 2, 1, and 0 are already in the model. And we're adding this one to, to look at the increase in the sum of squares regression. Uh, generically, it could be written like this, where this is a vector, and we're interested in testing that beta parameter. So the test becomes, is beta i equal to zero versus beta i not equal to zero? Now the full model is this, and we can separate it or partition it like we did up here, where then this design matrix, which has i plus one columns, right? The first column is, is a column of ones, associated with beta zero and the rest are regressors can be partitioned like this so then when we multiply this out we get xi minus one times beta i minus one and then and which is a matrix and this is a vector you know associated with this now design matrix i i columns uh, this i xi is a vector n minus one matrix or a vector now the reduced model, meaning the you know the null hypothesis is true, meaning this is zero, so this you know that product goes away, and we're left with this. Now note that HI, the hat matrix for this setting, and the hat matrix for this setting, that's uh, we're going to let HI and HI minus one be that the hat matrix from those models and see PV28 for a little more detail. So then the test statistic is this. We showed that the <coughs> in PV28 that this has a chi-squared uh, with one degree of freedom. And this is the hat matrix from the full model, the hat matrix from the reduced model. And this is our unbiased estimate of the residual sum of squares, or the, you know, the air term and that's the degrees of freedom associated one is degrees of freedom associated so it becomes an F test with one numerator degrees of freedom denominator degrees of freedom this and then um, there's a non centrality parameter associated with this but under the null hypothesis it's a central F distribution so the question is why is it a central F distribution under the null hypothesis well this is the reason so from previous video 28 in the list, when we looked at type 1 sums of squares, we came up with this is the reduction in the sum of squares regression when one beta parameter, the ith beta parameter, is added to a model that already has the i minus 1 you know, beta parameter in it and everything below it. And it was a chi-squared with this degrees of freedom. But notice that if this is the full model, right here you know has all the beta parameters but under the null hypothesis this is zero 
which then becomes this. So the full model hat matrix is based on the I minus one columns, right? So this implies that the hat matrix from the full model, which is HI, is equal to the hat matrix of the reduced model, HI minus one. I, those are equal, which then these are equal, which then this is zero, which then makes it a central chi-square distribution, which then makes this a central F test because these are two chi-square distributions. Um, now, so the type two sum of squares we looked at in previous video 29, and we're testing beta I equal to zero versus beta I not equal to zero. And here we have every regressor in the model. We're just testing, is this one regressor zero or not? which means that do, do we increase significantly increase the sum of squares regression by adding that one uh, predictor variable to the model. That's what this test is. But, you know, I like to think of it as, you know, is the predictor helpful or not? That's really what we're trying to test. So the model is this, full model is this, and then in this design matrix, there's the ith column associated with this test. So if we can like pluck it out and move it over here and then we move take out the one beta parameter and move it to the end so this is the remaining then um, the full model can be represented like this. Right? So this the, you know this combined is the design matrix. The reduced model under H, H uh, naught, meaning this is zero, when you multiply that out, then that goes away and we're just left with this model. So the test statistic in a very similar development as type one sums of squares, this is what we found to be the increase in the sum of squares regression when we add that one beta parameter or one regressor to the model with with containing all the previous, you know, all the other regressors. And this was a chi-squared distribution with one degree of freedom and had a non-centrality parameter. But under the null hypothesis, this hat matrix and this hat matrix for I minus one are the same. So the, the, um, so the non-centrality parameter goes to zero. This is the unbiased estimate of the sum of squared error. Or you know, or the variant, the variant, the residual variance. So for the general case, it is this. So we want to test our i beta parameter zero, or at least one of them not zero. And so you know, as a quick example, this could be you know we're testing beta one equal to beta four equal to beta five equal to zero. You know, are these three regressors zero, you know, are they helpful in the model or not? That's kind of what we're testing there. So the full model becomes this. And where we separate the I regressors here, and this is everything else. And so this um, beta I contains the I beta parameters that we want to test to be zero. Reduced model just be, you know when this is zero becomes just this piece right here. Um, so it um, this contains all the beta parameters except for sans the i beta parameters in that we're testing to be zero. Now in the full model, you know all of them contribute. So the hat matrix for this full model. Is, is sort of the normal hat matrix and this one is the reduced hat matrix so the test statistic and I'd recommend looking at PV29 for more detail but this is the increase in the sum of squares regression when we add those I beta parameters and it was a chi-square distribution with I degrees of freedom and it had a non-centrality parameter but under the null hypothesis these two hat matrices would be equal and 
the non subtracted parameter is zero. So that's why it becomes a central F distribution. So this is a chi squared divided by its degrees of freedom, chi squared divided by its degrees of freedom. And so it's a central F test. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.